I've encountered or read sometime actually since elementary school. So these are just things that I know but kind of not put into practice because of the other things that are happening around me. Because, you know, when you grow up, you have additional responsibilities and all, we tend to forget the basic things that actually matter. Something as basic as sleep, we tend to forget, especially when we're juggling with all of our responsibilities. So hopefully, this will be a video which would make it right and i hope that by the end of this video i would experience all of these benefits and appreciate what i'm reading right now originally this was supposed to be a video of me talking from day 1 to 30 of the things that i'm experiencing but i noticed right away that a lot of what i was saying was quite repetitive so i decided to give a weekly summary and then show specific clips from days which would reinforce those concepts. Now let's start with week one. Of course, naturally, this is when I struggle the most. I work in a call center industry, so naturally, I would sleep in the day when everybody else is awake. And you could imagine how the time zone differences caused the biggest challenges during week one. And at this time, I was still figuring out what kind of sleep schedule will work for me. So I began experimenting with different bedtimes, and this is how it looks like. Okay, so today is officially day one of the 8 hours uh, sleep challenge. It's already after shift, so yes, I do work in a night shift, so I will be sleeping in the broad of day with the noisy neighbors and hot temperature, hot Philippine temperature. And I'm probably not looking at the camera right now because I don't have any contacts. But as you can see, starting this challenge, I don't sound the most energetic. Plus, I have a breakout situation here. And these bags are just not doing it for me. I hope other than the physical changes, I would also be emotionally and uh, spiritually more energetic at the end of this journey. Yeah day one oh, so it's day two now i actually had a very tough time sleeping yesterday because again since i work at uh, night i have to sleep during the day and during the day everyone is awake the temperatures are very hot and the neighbors are noisy so i have a very tough time sleeping sleeping is way more difficult than waking up and actually, well, compared to yesterday, I think I'm a bit more refreshed. Hopefully, this will get better. But so far, it's going well. It is now my fourth day. And uh, the biggest takeaway that I've gotten so far in the last days is that a bedtime is, well, necessary. But it's not, like, very strict. Like, you have to sleep at a certain time and then wake up at a certain time. You have to be flexible in adjusting it. Say for example, your day went a bit longer than usual. So you have to adjust the sleeping and waking time for you to cope up with it. If you're going out of your way to get eight hours of sleep a day, then you will come to realize that the time when you sleep doesn't actually matter. Well, again, I work at night so I sleep at day. That alone is proof that it doesn't matter. What matters is you are getting the eight hours worth of sleep. And on my fourth day, it's actually getting easier for me to sleep. I, I don't know what is happening, but I am liking it. And what I'm feeling right now, I wish you could all feel the same way. So please do try this challenge out for yourself. I'm just four days into it, but it's really worth it, I'm telling you. So the pattern is just continuing. Sleeping is just getting easier and easier with each passing day. That's very nice. And so far, I am feeling much more refreshed um, the more I get immersed into this challenge. I was supposed to wake up at around 9 because I set up the timer for 9 hours when, by, from the time that I go to sleep because the first hour would be actually me preparing to sleep, right? I woke up at around 7.30 and do you 
you probably experienced those uh, moments wherein your body is already awake but your eyes just do not want to open so for about an hour and a half I was in that state not really sleeping but more of quiet resting meditating emptying some thoughts so it's very relaxing as well and usually I would only wake up ahead of the alarm if I'm very well rested so six days into it and I'm already experiencing that I just hope that I don't get over rested wherein it's going to be difficult to sleep again right but it's going well it's going well I really like what's happening things right now. I notice at a first glance I can see that my breakouts are clearing up and the bags well of course I still have them they won't just go away of course they're less obvious compared to when I first started yeah so overall I also feel good about um, in general overall mood improvement I see that happening week two so my experimentations with bedtime continues and I noticed that my decision-making has improved for this particular week also I had a schedule change which gave me a real tough time coping up but at the same time I had a deeper understanding of the root causes of why I'm having such a hard time sleeping I would still have days wherein I would undersleep or oversleep but the biggest takeaway is that I actually found a way to pay for my sleep debts. Check this out. We are now at day 9 and earlier I still had to call my internet service provider. It's still an ongoing issue and I was able to finish it around 12 noon. So I was trying to upgrade my plan but the... Uh, person over the phone said that the ports were unavailable in our area so I finally decided to find a new internet service provider so that's what's taking so long this issue is probably gonna take <laughs> weeks before it gets resolved but the bottom line is I asked my manager to uh, I mean I asked if I could be adjusted to a later shift so in the morning I could find um, internet service providers that would be suitable for me and he agreed so my new shift is now at 11 in the evening up until 8 in the morning and I would still use my break to film right so I still had eight hours of sleep and I feel quite dizzy earlier because of the sudden change in sleeping schedule but I still feel good here's the thing if you have a family member or if you know someone maybe a neighbor perhaps that is working in the night shift three things would hamper sleep during the day heat light and noise so you are actually doing them a favor if you would not be the source of those things and I had a tough time against sleeping because the lights are being turned on randomly the um, I had the AC unit on but the doors were being open so some of the cool air is getting out and the hot and humid air is getting in my uh, the room where I was sleeping and of course all the radios are on because at 11 in the morning people would be watching their televisions and have their radios on talk, talking about lunch so I did not have the best experience. I felt dizzy and I'm not in the mood today. But I hope uh, at least this experience would at least give you some idea of the struggles we are facing as night shift workers. So the world is in favor of those um, day shift workers. Um, we need help in, the, in sleeping just as much as you do at night. Mm -hmm. Wear a headset, do not, um, do not turn on the lights randomly or maybe if you are a night shifter like me, it would be good to invest in some 
um, eye mask and the earplugs and an air conditioning unit. Mm -hmm. That's what I can. Part of working in the call center industry is adjusting to varying shifts. Now I remember when I was still a trainer, my shift would change on a weekly basis, right? And as you know, my shift changed because I have to use the morning to find an internet service provider. And as a result of that, I had to rearrange some of my uh, routines. So part of that is my sleep schedule. I am now sleeping at 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. And yesterday was tough, but earlier was even tougher because I may or may not have spent like three hours trying to get some sleep because, well, if anything, it's more quiet, right, earlier. But there's a lot of things that happening. My bank called me offering insurance coverage for free for the COVID-19. So I had to take care of that. Of course, it's free coverage, right? Who wouldn't want that? I've been waiting for that. And also another package from my uh, unboxing video arrived. So I had to wake up for that again. So more or less, I've had some five hours five to six hours of sleep but I tried for the entire nine hours I tried to get asleep right away so maybe I am over rested I hope that the lack of sleep that I had earlier would cause me to be under rested so that later I can fall asleep more easily right so I'm already doing something about this I already ordered some uh, things that would help me with sleeping that is for another unboxing video too so uh, again people if you have relatives friends or neighbors that are uh, working the night shift just like I am this is what they're facing on a daily basis and I myself decided to just sleep in the office for months on end I live in the office just so I could have quality sleep because it's necessary for my work. We are in our own country, but we it's as if, it's as if we're um, foreigners in our own country because we basically live in a different time zone. So, there. As for sleep, I really had a wonderful time because today's uh, Sunday. And earlier, since there is no more uh, work, I turned off my alarm and I went to sleep again just to catch up on those nights where I'm not able to get the full eight hours of sleep, right? And one thing I realized, and this would be very good information, especially when the guidelines would become relaxed as the COVID-19 uh, aftermath subsides, you should really spend the weekends getting sleep, right? I mean, I remember when I was still working on site on a regular basis, if it's the last shift, many people would go to wherever and spend their weekends there. I, I just think that weekends are supposed to be a time for recharging. I mean, of course, you can spend your uh, weekends however you want, but I'm just saying... It should be a preparation for the upcoming week so that you will feel 100% if not more. Week 3, here we go. So I finally figured out an appropriate bedtime for me. And I noticed that the problems I was experiencing was actually similar to the ones in the previous weeks. And I'm of course better equipped to handle these problems. I also noticed some mood improvements including the way how I speak. And I actually ordered some sleeping tools which arrived. Can't wait for you to see that. And I still had variances in sleep wherein I would sometimes oversleep or undersleep in specific days. But I don't really feel dizzy or any backlash from it during the day, especially when I'm doing work. So here are the details. Check it out. Some things worth mentioning as we start the second half of this challenge. 
you can expect that you will have the most difficult time sleeping whenever your shift would change any major change in schedules sleeping schedules would be the most challenging parts all right and but i would like you to know that if you are consistent with setting up an alarm for nine hours then you would eventually pick up in about three to four days is time right a week at most so yesterday i received the package the the, um, the items that are supposed to help me get better sleep i'll go ahead and unbox them today and i'll use them right away so this video would have a dual purpose of being an, an extended review of the product it's basically a what they call this uh, an earplug and a an eye mask so I'm very excited to try that out and for the most part I've been talking about how easy it is to sleep and all that now I'd like to talk about some other benefits that I've gotten while doing this challenge and one thing that I've noticed is keeping myself calm and collected even in times of pressure I noticed that I'm able to make quick decisions accurate decisions right away and I'm generally happier the entire day I mean I know I'm in very stressful situations like trying to meet a deadline like right now today I have a very uh, I have a very tight deadline at work but it's just it's like I almost don't care I, I feel like I can do the task even if I say for example if I had eight hours to do it I feel like even if I start doing it actually on the last two hours of the shift, I feel like I could still do it. That's kind of the burst of energy that I'm feeling right now. So again, what I'm feeling right now, I wish you could all feel the same. So please do try out this challenge for yourself if you want to experience it as well. I had the best daylight sleep thanks to these. So you remember what I said about night workers should be able to invest in a good quality um, set of earplugs and eye masks. So the package arrived yesterday. I did an unboxing video for both of them which is coming soon. And of course I tried them on. So this would actually serve as an extended review of the product to see for effectiveness. I've had a wonderful time so starting with this earplug it's a moldable one it fits perfectly in my ear well in anyone's ear for that matter so it blocks out noise I would say around 80 to 85 percent of the noise I basically slept continuously for around seven to eight hours and I've never had that before without being interrupted so for the sound it's good and of course this very very silky state-of-the-art eye mask is the most luxurious one and sweet smelling too it's very soft and smooth i can't believe i found this product and bought it so again you would need tools to help you fall asleep because special challenges are present when you're sp uh, sleeping in the day like i am when you're a night worker so I want you guys to enjoy the quality sleep that you deserve. Lucky for you um, night sleepers out there, you don't have this problem. But I'm just letting you know, these are effective. At this point, I've come to terms with the fact that most people are awake during the day. So how I work around my sleeping schedule around that is... So in my 24 hours, this is how it would usually go. 9 hours would be spent for work, which leaves me for 15 hours, and I'll take away another um, 8 hours from that, which is the time that I'm supposed to be sleeping, right? So 15 minus 8, that will just leave me with 7 hours. I usually divide that in two, so I'll have 3.5 hours before the shift and 3.5 hours after my shift to do the things that I need. That's how I've been doing it since I've started working in the night shift. But because of the extraordinary circumstances that we're having right now, I had to rearrange that. In line with what I said earlier, I spend around 6 hours after shift doing the business that I need. Internet, 
um, catching up to do on emails, personal stuff, because again, people are awake in the morning. That's just how the world works. And so far, it's going good. The the adjustment that I've made is a uh, game changer. So when I wake up, I have one hour to just eat and then start my shift. So the, that's just a suggestion. Of course, some of you will... I don't have kids. I, I don't have that much of a responsibility at home. Other people would have additional burdens that they have to think of. But if your circumstances are somehow similar to mine, I'm just sharing that you, you might want to consider uh, doing most of your um, outside of work business during the morning when everyone is awake so everyone can respond to you in some days i would have like seven hours of sleep and some i would go nine it's not like a perfect eight hours a day kind of thing so i guess it just comes to a point where some days you're, you just you're just more tired you're more overworked on some days, say Mondays and Fridays, right? So that's how it's happening. Do not get frustrated if you do not get the perfect eight hours a day. You just have to strategize when you would sleep more and when you would sleep less. And when I say less, I mean like seven hours, not like two hours, three hours less, because that definitely defeats the purpose of this challenge. If you would say like sleep four hours, for the five days and like um make up for everything in the weekend and all you had done during the weekend is sleep and not recreational stuff right so balance everything week four is when i finally overcame the challenges that i've had with sleeping i noticed that my sleep quality is so much better compared to the last weeks and i tend to sleep much easier and much deeper during this final week but The biggest change of all is the mental health benefits. They are significantly more noticeable. And here are the details. So everything just went uphill ever since I got the eye mask and the earplugs. Consistently, I have been getting 8 hours of sleep, sometimes even more. And I always sleep continuously. So noise and light do not disturb me anymore. I'm really happy that I did something about the situation and the problems that I'm having. And you should too. If you're ha- Whatever problems you're having with uh, sleep, you should solve it right away because it would have tremendous benefits if you're able to do so. Since I'm not having a problem with sleeping anymore, I should talk about the benefits that I am experiencing right now. And what I've noticed is the overall mood improvement. Usually at this point, I'm around halfway through my shift and I should be starting to feel a bit um, down, like um, a battery charger running out of juice. That's usually how I will feel uh, right now. But because of this challenge, I'm actually able to, you know, still have a lot of life in me. I'm still fairly energetic compared to my regular self. And I expect this to get better. And this is actually one of the things that I love about it. So I've never been this energetic in my life. Although it doesn't sound in my voice because everyone is asleep. I can't really talk aloud. But I just want to emphasize how um, refreshing this feels. I noticed how ideas come much more easily to me now. So I always have a pen and paper handy just in case one pops up in mind because what I'm getting right now is very good ideas so I can't afford to forget about them. I like how this challenge really puts you, um, puts your head in the right place. So that's my biggest takeaway. Uh, there's a lot of takeaways already but this is the biggest one that I can say for Earlier, now. when I set up my alarm for 9 hours, That was the shortest time I've ever had before I fell asleep. I was, I'm gonna say around less than 20 minutes I fell asleep immediately. Not only that, I woke up with my alarm. So for most of these days, uh, this challenge, I usually wake up ahead of my alarm. But earlier, I slept through all of it. So I slept for more than 8 hours. Mental clarity is 
a treasure that none of us gets to have, especially during these um, quarantine times where we don't really get to interact with uh, people physically. And I'm so happy that I took on this challenge because it just gave me that consistently. So I, I have a lot of things going on. I have work. I have my household to worry about. I have this YouTube channel that I'm launching. But I'm able to somehow keep my head above water. And a lot of the things that I'm doing right now, I'm just imagining I wouldn't fathom to be possible when I was still working on site. So a lot would, um, a lot helped when the distractions were removed. I got time to spend with my family, with, um, with doing the things that I really want to do. So I love how something as basic as sleeping for eight hours a day could give you such an improvement to the quality of life that you have. So my day went quite longer than usual because it's my grandmother's um, birthday celebration. It's now 2.30 a.m. and I just woke up. I know that this is another interruption in my sleep schedule, but I pretty much know the drill at this point. It would take me a couple of days to adjust, usually three to four days, but it should be um, shorter because of the tools that I have, which is the eye mask and the earplugs. So, I got this. As expected, it took a bit longer for me to sleep earlier, but I managed, I would say, around an hour. I spent an hour trying to sleep, but I did. Can't believe this is finally it. The challenge is now over. And as we speak, I am no longer having problems with sleep quality. I'm glad that I was able to address that within the 30 day challenge. And I can say that I will be continuing this habit for the remaining days of my life. Before I share my final thoughts, here is a side-by-side -side photo of me before I began day 1, and on the right is me at the end of day 30. Now, what I've noticed um, in this challenge is that sleep is so easy to neglect, considering how important it is to our health. And what's worse is we often compromise sleep for non-value-adding activities like browsing your phone. You won't actually notice the problems that are giving you a hard time sleeping until you go out of your way to improve your sleep quality, like what I did in the last 30 days. And the most important thing, day-to-day -day tasks are so much easier when you're well-rested. Think about it. If the tasks are easier, you can do more. So much more. And if you can do more, you will feel more accomplished. And of course, if you feel more accomplished, you'll be happier inside and out, just like what I did. Again, I am so happy that I did this challenge, and it would be an honor if I will be the one to um, make you do the same. But if not, please do something about your existing sleep quality. I know in one way or another, it can be improved. Thanks for watching my video, and I hope you have a wonderful day.